Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm from the Cardiff Council LDP team. We recently adopted our LDP early this year after four-year preparation process. And I was going to outline how we undertook a HIA on the plan because we were keen to embed health in the new plan for Cardiff. So I'll just outline how we undertook it, uh, the findings and lessons learned and the outcome at the end. So just to, just to provide a bit of context, just to, you know, for starters, basically Cardiff, Cardiff um, has got a population of uh, 357,000 uh, people. That's the latest population estimate. Um, by 2026, which is the LDP plan period, Cardiff housing provision is predicted to increase to 40, 41,415. Uh, and um, by, by the end of the plan period, we're looking at a 22% increase in population to 403,000. Um, health is a key component of the council's livable city agenda. But basically, um, you know, the, you know, the council's prepared, prepared a livable city uh, document, and we're looking, you know, to, you know, to promote the health of the city and make Cardiff a better place to, to work, and and live in and visit. So it's a key part of that. So that that was a key driver in the process. In terms of Cardiff's um, characteristics, it has a prosperous north and southern arc and high levels of de deprivation experience between the two. So the north of the city is um, prosperous and the southern part of the city has got an arc of deprivation. And there's a 20 year gap in uh, life expectancy across the city between the north and south. And importantly, 51% of the population are overweight or obese. So, so basically, um, health is a key consideration in, in, in going forward in terms of the LDP over the next 10 years. So just a bit of, bit of background to the LDP. As I said, it was adopted uh, earlier this year in January 2016. It sets out the growth of the city and the areas to be, to be protected. Basically, we're, we're proposing seven, seven big strategic sites across the city and, in, and a new employment area in the east of the city. But also, we've got a green wedge north of the city we're seeking to protect as well. Uh, it sets out a range of policies against which plan applications are considered. So we've got a range of detailed development control policies in there. So, that, you know, so applications can, can be assessed against those. And um, early in the process, health was identified as a key issue. As you can see from the diagram here, health, health overlaps with a lot of different areas within the plan because the plan is an all-embracing subject. A lot of topic areas are related to health. So that, so that was identified as a key issue early in the process. So it was important to ensure that health issues were embedded in the plan. And that was something that we you know, were keen to do at the outset. So basically, in order to do this, we undertook a H, uh, HIA at key stages in plan preparation. So we undertook a HIA at the key you know, preferred strategy stage and a deposit stage. <coughs> so why do we use uh, HIA? Bas basically, that it allowed the iterative process to be followed so we could take, you know, basically progress the HIA as a plan developed. Because as I said, it's a four-year process from beginning to end and there's various stages in preparation. So the first stage was preferred strategy and then and there was a deposit stage, so we did a HIA at both of those stages. So as a plan progressed, we could uh, you know, build on that. And it allowed a variety of changes, changes to be suggested, but not all those could be taken on board because planning, planning does have limitations. It, it does cover a lot of areas, but we are governed by planning, national planning guidance, and some things are, are beyond the scope of planning. Um, even if, even if a policy has not changed, you still have assessed the potential impacts that policies could have. So, um, so, so you know, even if you don't change, you still look to the health impacts. And importantly, enabled an audit trail on how health issues have been addressed uh, for the examination for the LDP inspectors so they could see how health issues have been taken on board in the plan. It is a relatively, relatively straightforward process, but you do have to have guidance from, from uh, important bodies. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, also, it will, you know, basically, it, it will result in a improved policies and plans, which are more efficient as a, effective as a result. And basically, it takes on advice, advice um, in the Welsh Health Impact Assessment Support Unit guidance as well. So, so, so that there's lots of reasons to use HIA. So, which uh, template do we use, and which methodology do we use? So we use the Wales Health Impact Assessment Support Unit guidance, and there's, there's a practical guide. And this assesses the positive and negative effects of policies. 
And this considered healthy lifestyles, hours in quality, access to work, accessibility, food access, climate change, crime reduction and community safety, air quality and neighbourhood amenity, social cohesion and social capital, public services and resource minimisation. So there's a whole range of issues we considered. So in terms of doing that, we reviewed each policy um, against that matrix. So each, each policy in the plan was reviewed against those factors. And we considered the positive and negative impacts on health of those, those issues. So for any negative impacts, um, some actions were suggested that may reduce or remove the potential negative impacts. So, so, so if there's negative impacts, we had actions to, to count, you know, mitigate those impacts. And importantly, the HIA was undertaken by a group of representatives from Cardiff and the Vale Health Board, the Wales Health Impact Assessment Support Unit, for Cardiff Third Sector Council, and officers from various departments within the council, including planning, transport, environment, and sustainability. Because it's a cross-cutting area health, so it's important to, to, to involve as many departments across the council as possible, and also bring professionals in to help the process. So this is an example of the matrix we did. So basically, we got relevant policies, plan policies, we got positive impacts, negative impacts, suggested actions to mitigate, and the council response. So it's a methodic, you know, methodical process from beginning to end. So we worked through each policy and, and assessed, assessed the policy against, against, against the checklist, and then came up with actions and, uh, you know, and how, how the council was going to respond and going forward. So just to give you an idea of the issues that were identified in the HIA, you know, I'll give you a broad, I know, you know, obviously I won't go for each one because it's, you know, it's quite a lengthy report. I just thought I'd identify the main issues that, that came out. I've also included um, diagrams on the left-hand side of uh, some of the master plans for the strategic sites in the plan across the city, which illustrate how we took things on board and how, how we addressed various issues raised by the HIA. So, it's, so a, a big issue that came out was um, sustainable transport. You know, you know, Barry highlighted it in his presentation earlier today. So it's important to have sustainable transport corridors. And you can see the, the purple, purple lines in the master plan area are those sustainable transport corridors. And also, we're looking at rapid bus transport corridors as well. And you can see the dotted black line going through the middle of the site, which goes out further out to uh, the Antricent area and into the city centre. So that came out as a strong issue in the HIA. Also, open space was a key issue that was identified as well in the HIA. So it's important to have connected green open spaces, protect existing open space, and provide new open spaces. And you can see on the master planning framework there that, that, we've, that we're looking to connect the open spaces. There you can see the green areas, and you can see the darker green areas, which are the areas of woodland in the plan. So, so we're looking to provide connected open space throughout the area. So the city, city is connected out to the countryside. That also improves you know, ecology, ecology as well, because um, you know, biodiversity can uh, connect to the city and go out into the, into, the, into the countryside. So open space is a key point as well. And again, echoing um, the two previous speakers, Tim and Barry, walking and cycling came out as a, as a key consideration through the HIA process. And you can see those green, green dotted lines here, that they're walking and cycling routes. We've also got dedicated cycling routes as well. The, uh, the red lines going through the site there as well. So, so, so that came out as, as a key consideration, so it's important to support, support those activities. So again, you know, the further issues identified were access to community facilities, because it's important that people have access, you know, ready access to community facilities so, so they can walk to them rather than take the car. So again, this is another master plan I've highlighted here, but you can see the purple, purple dot purple dot there which is the community center so you can see that you know, we, we, you know we're looking to provide community centers within the new urban extensions and also health health facilities and and religious facilities as well so, so that was another key consideration um, there was there was detailed uh, things that came out as well which helped improve the plan like you know, follow the manual for streets and, and the Cardiff cycle design guide make reference to that in the document as well in terms of the houses we were actually providing on the site, because this site here is for 1,300 houses, we're looking to ensure that they're energy efficient, so it's important that the design of the developments have, have energy efficiency at the heart, energy, energy efficiency at the heart of them. And a range of uh, types of housing is also important as well, so we're looking to provide 
affordable housing, different type sizes of housing as well. So, and also lifetime housing as well. So when people get older, the houses are adaptable for changes in lifestyles, people age. So those are all the sort of things we're looking at in the detailed design of the areas as well. Again, all these were highlighted by the HIA and were, were a really useful checklist in terms of um, planning the future of these areas. Again, I've got another master plan here. This is North East Cardiff uh, between Pont Prenum and Liz Vane. And again, you can see the sustainable transport corridors there, the purple lines, and also the, the dedicated uh, cycle routes, the red dotted lines, and, and the walking and cycling routes, the uh, green routes there, and the connected open space and the district and local centres there as well. So all, all these things you know, were, were important. The checklist helped highlight these in terms of going forward. There were, there were other issues as well, like... Um, it was important to reuse the topsoil in developments as well for, for the open space, you know, for allotments as well, because there was a lot of high agricultural land in these areas, so it's good quality agricultural land, so it was important to reuse that as well. And also community growing space linked to the open space issue and allotments. It's important to provide areas for allotments within these, within these sites and uh, for community growing as well. You know, crime as well is an important consideration as well. It's important that these areas are safe in terms of the community as well. And, and these sort of principles are built into the, into the design of the developments as well. And finally, air, noise and light pollution is an important consideration. You've got the M4 motorway running through the site to the north there. And um, it's important that the noise from that is attenuated as well. And, and also, you know, the air pollution from that as well is attenuated as well. But also light pollution is important. I, and, you know, it comes down to detailed design of, of, of your, light, you know, your lamp posts and um, other issues. So, so those are the key issues highlighted in the HIA. So what were the benefits of, uh, of doing this process? Basically, it was a learning process. It helped develop the knowledge of the team. So, so the team had, you know, the LDP team had a, had a better knowledge of health issues and how they interact with planning issues across, across the board. Uh, it, can, it can also help reduce the negative impacts of health by thinking about the way policies are written. So, so basically, basically you're, you're doing an audit trail and you're, and you're looking at ways to mitigate to mitigate any impacts and, and improve the, the way the policy is worded. Uh, it basically assesses the distribution of impacts from a, from a proposal on the whole population with a particular reference to how the proposal will affect vulnerable people. Both short and long term impacts are considered along with obvious and less obvious impacts. And it also importantly it promotes cross department and sector working as well. So, you know, you know, basically get together in a working group and, and put, you know, other departments across the council as well as planning, consider health issues as well. It's a positive approach. You're not, you know, basically you're looking to improve the plans. So it's not just about negatives. And, it, and it's flexible as well. So um, you basically can tailor the matrix to suit your requirements and present the data as, as you feel fit. Limitations. There are some limitations because uh, obviously, the, you know, the staff within your team need to be Trains, so you, so, you, so you need to have a fully up, full, and, full understand the process, and and, um, and and be aware of how to undertake it. Yeah, but basically we've drawn a lot, a lot of knowledge as well in preparing the HIA from, um, from from others with knowledge, like the Welsh uh, Health Impact Assessment Union. We had a training event, so so they came in for the day and gave us some formal training on the on on the process. So so that really helped inform the process. Also. We worked very closely with, uh, with, you know, with the health board as well, you know, in terms of undertaking the, the assessments. So they, they were a key part of the process. You know, they, they were represented on the steering group, and they helped put, put the report together as well. So it's important to get people with the knowledge on board as well, not just about planners. Like I said earlier, not all the recommendations can be taken on board because planning is restricted by um, planning guidance. We only can do what is in national planning guidance. So there were issues that were identified, but we couldn't take them forward in the plan. And they were, they were looked at the examination, but they were no longer included in the plan after the inspectors examined the plan. For example, we, had, we, were, we were keen to control the control takeaways within the city near schools, but that got taken out of the plan at the examination because it wasn't in national planning guidance. Also, we're looking to have HIA for major housing schemes. Again, that was taken out of the plan as well because, again, it's not in national planning guidance so there are limitations to, to what you can do you have to operate within the planning guidance and time constraints all the time constraint with everything but um you know basically you just need to have the necessary time identified in the process to you know you know to 
you know, to prepare a robust uh, HIA assessment. So in terms of the outcome, in terms, in terms of the positive, health, health issues have been embedded within the adopter plan and we got the evidence there in terms of the health impact assessments we did at the preferred strategy and deposit stage. And the inspectors uh, basically looked at those documents and they were happy, subject to the issues I highlighted earlier, happy with how we had taken that forward. And importantly, we've got two policies now in the plan that all applications for, for development in the city will be assessed against. So we've got two specific health policies in the plan, which hopefully will, will, will help developments to have a more healthy aspect and take on board healthy lifestyles. Um, you know, basically, you know, you know, basically, in, in, you know, ensuring that the physical and built environment supports interconnectivity, active travel choices, promotes healthy lifestyles, and enhances road safety. So it echoes some of the things the other two speakers before me uh, mentioned. So hopefully, when new developments come in, they will have to be assessed against that, and there will be a positive outcome in terms of health benefits. So that's, you know, so that's basically outlining the process we undertook. You can view the HIA documents on the council's website. I got the web address there. Uh, thank you for listening.